everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to Kit Crunch Time. And today it's all about the flip. Yes, the kit flip. Now, I think I know what I'm going to use, but I'm not quite sure because I do have a variety of paper. So let's just get right to it. And maybe I'll even do some cutting and gluing on film. It depends. I'm waiting for a phone call and you know how that is. So what I am going to scrapbook is uh, photos of my great grandmother and her name was Effie. Yes, Grandma Effie. So isn't that an unusual name? And I'm not quite sure who she was named after. I'm going to have to ask my mom that. But yes, my great grandma. And so this is all going to be about a woman. Yes, a vintage woman. That's what we're going to do because I never got to meet her, of course. I don't really know too much about her. But I'm definitely going to record the story about Grandma Effie. So let's do the paper flip. And of course, here's the transparency, which is always good for just about every layout you can imagine because it has to do with photography and film and cameras and so I will stick that down there. And then we have some little uh, bits and bobs. I just have these extras to the right here. So we'll see, but I do like that butterfly and I don't wanna bury too many things. So let's flip these papers and let's see what we have. Okay, let's see what we have. And so of course, some of these papers are my mind's eye and they're textured and they're heavyweight from back in 2012, 2013. I wish they made papers like that nowadays, but they don't. But even those two, paper, two papers together, wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I really like that. Oh my goodness. Hmm. So that's a possibility. I did not think I would go that way, <laughs> but then this is pretty too. Oh my goodness. So I think I'm, I thought this was going to be hard, but look at this. That would even go too, because it looks like Grandma Effie's uh, dress there. Wow. Okay, I might have to rethink this, ladies, because I was not planning this. And this is just a white, so I could use that. Of course, I don't know if I'd sacrifice that floral for that white background. We have some gray, and we have some poinsettias, which this was a Christmas paper. I will not be using that poinsettia. <laughs> And then we have another white background, but then that's a vintage, and it's too thin for a background. We have this orange. Now that is pretty. Oh, and I have this scrap here too. That's pretty. You know, get some of that vintage vibe in because this is great grandma. Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to put these to the side. And this is what I saw, and this little bit of strip right here. This is a fancy pants line. Of course, that was the diagonal I used for the other two pages. I saw this strip right here. It says homemaking, needlewood, gardening, and cooking, and beauty, and the vintage typewriter, and all those hats, and the seamstress, because that is my mom's side of the family. That is what stuck out at me, and I still think I'm going to play with that. Um, but I will tell you, <laughs> those two patterns, I would have never thought that I liked that. But I really do. It kind of reminds you of back in the... I don't know. What would those have been? I think these were taken in the 70s. Uh, but, and of, and of course, they're colored, so that's great. Okay, so I'm getting sidetracked here because it's amazing when you do a kit flip, you're not looking at the papers that you're looking at in the kit. Now you're looking at a whole new perspective. And then the ideas start flowing. And, of course, this paper right here. <laughs> that is just... Man, that's perfect. Wow. Oh, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Of course, that was the pink gingham, but this is perfect. What do we got on here? Roses, garments. Oh, yeah, dress shields, World's Fair. That's perfect. And, of course, this is Bow Bunny. I am not going to sacrifice that. And that is a pink marble. Of course, you know, I could use that. But those two pieces look good together. Hmm, you never know. We could do another base page. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyways, yes. And then we have some October afternoon. Okay, so now where will I start? I don't know. And I'll tell you why. Because I have too many choices. So, what would you pick? I like this combination right here. That is really... It looks... I mean, this paper. It feels vintage, if that makes sense. It has textured... Wow, I really like that. Then where was that newspaper print? Oh, that's nice too. Mm, yes, yes. That is real. Oh, man, I really like that. <laughs> yeah, I really, really do. I might have to do that. And then that's one option. So another option is I had this floral. 
which looked like Grandma Effie's dress there. That is pretty. That looks like Grandma's wallpaper there, doesn't it? And so what can I use for a background? Well, if I didn't have anything, I could always get a piece of cardstock. So that's a choice. Okay, so that's another one. And then, of course, we have this vintage. We have October afternoon. We have this yellow. Or, I'm sorry, orange. And what was this last option? Oh, yes, this here. This was a kit starter. I saw that. So what am I going to do? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. And if you want to just play along with me, let's just keep doing that. Because I don't know how I'm going to do my page. And so we're just going to scrapbook. And we're going to see what we like. And just because... I use it today doesn't mean I can't use it for something else. I really like that. I'm going to cut off this fuchsia pink. And of course, my kit contents are the same that I had the last two weeks, I'm just playing them with in different arrangement. I have ephemera, I have braids, and I know I have vintage flair. I like that right there. So if I wanted to do a quick page, I could go right to that L design, which we've been talking about in base pages. And I could do that. So let me get a piece of cardstock here. I could get a piece of ivory cardstock. And let me see what I like. We're just going to play. And I will tell you, when you have choices, sometimes it's difficult. But this would be fun to do a fast L. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play with this fast L design as we were showing earlier. Where'd my other photo go? Because I really like these images. I mean, isn't that perfect? Isn't that perfect? So basically what I'm saying is, is this could be part of my story about Grandma Effie and I didn't have to do anything about it. You know, I didn't have to create it. It's right there. So then I could put the, I could put the photos there and I could mat them with this or I could use that. Mm. Oh, yes. And we can put that there. I didn't even have to mat the photos. Now, these are original photos. I've already taken a copy with my iPhone, but I'm going to be using the originals because I don't know who else would use these and protect them if I didn't. So, in my family, I'm the one to do that, and I will. Of course, here's a stripe. I could... Oh, I like how that separates that. And I was just laying here... To, I was just laying here to the right. I really like that. Okay, that's an option. So, let me just stop with that. Anything else I could use? That that green is just not... Okay, so here we have... It's her beauty that captures your attention. It's her personality that captures your heart. Oh, that's interesting. I can't really use that because I didn't know Grandma Leffy. But I do have this. So, let's cut, up, let's cut into this. And... So what I think I'm going to do, how's this for a flip? Not only did I flip the papers, I may be flipping my lid and doing two different pages and then figuring out which one I want. Now that is something I've never really done. So let's play with both of those. Now those are 12 inch pieces, but that doesn't mean I have to use them. I can just use a, a snippet. And I think I like this big one down here. So what I think I may do Sometimes I have to flip to see which is the right way. Okay, there's a number three. Which way is that going? So I could always cut that in half and not use the whole thing. There's no sense using the whole thing. I like that at the bottom. Look at that already. Oh, man, I like that. I like it. I like it. And then I could even mat these photos with this. Of course, I thought about using that for another layout. So basically, I could end up with three different pages here. <laughs> wow, that is a flip. But we're just playing. Now, look at the butterflies there. Or I could add these butterflies over here. Oh, yes. Now, that is a quick page. So, right there. You saw firsthand how quick that was. And, again, you can't go wrong with that L design. And you can't go wrong with not matting your photos. See how fast that is. And, again, I would take this transparency and cut it in half. Okay, so that's one. Now, if I wasn't filming, I would snap a photo of that. <laughs> okay. Now, let's look at this other option. And it was these two papers. Why am I drawn to that? Oh my goodness. Maybe I'll have to find some other <laughs> family photos and play. But I could simply cut this down, mat it with this, because these are just lovely white papers. 
I didn't even look at some of this stuff here. I just got busy playing, didn't I? Why not? Okay, so what else do we have? I do have this orange. I have this. Uh, I don't know. I think I like what I just created. Isn't that something? I have this I could play with. I have that I could play with. Oh, you can make a you can make a band with that. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so then what else do we have? I don't know. I didn't plan on playing like this. Oh, that's pretty too. Oh, wow. Oh, that wasn't the flip. I can't use that. That's not the flip. This is a flip. Oh, I could use that too. That is really pretty. And I could even do it, you know, horizontal. Here we go. <laughs> Got to do the horizontal. Okay, so I am visualizing this yellow. I'm visualizing it with that matte. And then I could bring Grandma Effie over here. Oh, man, I really like that. And then you know what? Doilies. Mm -hmm. Let's get those doilies in there. Oh, wow. Okay, now let me move all this other stuff. I'm really liking that. Oh, now see, that is how I did two different mood and feels. Right there. That one. We'll move it to the left here. And then we will uh, do it to the right here. Wow. Two different mood and feels. This is more uh, the modern vintage woman. <laughs> And then this is just, oh, it reminds me of Grandma's wallpaper. Because she is in her kitchen there with that tablecloth and that retro. Look at that kitchen table and chairs. Isn't that fun? Now, oh, that's pretty, too. Now, if I would do this over here on the left, I would need to bring in this background of this turquoise. And I would probably mat those photos. I would do that. I think I'm going to have to find another photo and do two layouts. I did not plan for this. Isn't that funny how things, how it works out that way with papers? Okay, so now what will I do here? Because I got to clearly get with the program, but then look what else would I had. Oh, I had those. Okay, you want to do that again? You want to play some more? Why not? Where's Grandma Effie? <laughs> Let's play some more. So there are two papers. I love this process, ladies. I really do. And we could play with the doilies again. Of course, you know, you're talking about a great grandma. You have to get doilies in there. And what else do we have to play with? Transparency. We have a transparency here. That pop of black. And then I have this pop of black. Play with that. And, of course, I knew I had some flare. Flare. And I got a sew machine on here somewhere. Oh, there's a camera. Oh, wait, and then we have a butterfly. Oh, man, I'm, I'm getting too excited. <laughs> oh, and this bird. Oh, now see, that's pretty, too. Take that one away. But look at this sew machine. Oh, that's not, that's perfect. Take those away. Okay. So I wish you were, you were here and you would vote A, B, or C. I'm, I mean, that is just how quick. When you get playing with papers and you let mood and feel dictate, this comes together. This process is really quick. Honestly, it is. Because right there is Grandma Effie. I could go there. I could do this. And I could do that. Which one would you vote for? I think what I will do is that I will snap a photo and I will ask my mom, since this is her grandmother, I could ask her, say, which one did you like? Oh, and look here. I had some flowers. Oh, my goodness. That is pretty. Oh, I like that too. Such decisions. Okay, so what would I do? Yeah, I'll take... Oh, I have a picture here. I have another vintage photo here. I could play with that. No, see, I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take a photo of all three of these. Because each one of these evoke a different mood and a different feel and a different vibe. And that was just playing with the same kit, just divvying up those papers. And so this is one way if you have a kit and you want to create more than one layout at a time, do these backgrounds, your bare bones at one time, and then just play with your papers. If you don't like it here, switch it up, put it over here. Basically assembly line, yes. And you may see some of that coming up in 2020. Absolutely. So uh, hang on there for a minute. I'm going to make a quick decision. I'm going to ask my mom. Oh, and I had this piece of paper right here. Oh, I could do something with that. <laughs> You know, tuck things in. I like that too.
Very pretty. And all it is is just playing with papers and shifting them back and forth. So I will come back and I will have made... Oh, look at that stripe. I can get that in there. Okay. I need to stop playing. I will come back and I will have decided and I think I'm going to pick this one. Why? Because of Grandma Effie's uh, dress right there. I really, I really like that. And of course, that color. And then using that pop of black. But then this is nice too. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Okay. Yes. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with any of them. So, again, we've been talking about playing in this Kid Crunch, and I hope showing it this way, flipping those papers over, and doubling my choices, and then playing just with different color combinations to get different mood and feels to create the layout and record the story what you want. Absolutely. So come back, and I will have a finished layout. I have a feeling it'll be this one. Okay, hold on. All right, I am back with my finished layout, and I, oh man, I think this is the seventh or eighth time I've had to film this because I keep going down too many rabbit trails, uh, rabbit trails. I have so many questions that I've gotten recently I wanted to answer, so let's just get to it. As you can see, I clearly chose this turquoise floral on top of this ledger paper. So simple. So if you take away my photos and you take away my clusters, what do you have? <laughs> You have 11 and a half by 11 and a half on a 12 by 12 piece of paper with a transparency, which is about three inches by 12. That is how simple this page is. And so I'm going to talk more about the visual triangle in just a minute. But honestly, if you think about that visual triangle, you can do faster pages. So as you can see, there are my photos. I had, uh, matted those on some of that newspaper, fancy pants paper. And then there's my mega cluster here. And here's a cluster which is incorporated with my title and then another little subtitle up there. And then what I did was I took my transparency as a little bit of a shelf to hold all of this above it. And so very easy to do. Even got in a branding strip and added it underneath. And then let's talk about color for a minute. So if you notice on this page that my turquoises, is that such a word? The color of turquoise is not matchy-matchy. It just isn't. I have different shades of turquoise in this bread and this bread, this branding strip, this paper, that paper. I don't worry about the exact color anymore because it's mood and feel. It's all turquoise. It doesn't matter if it's different shades or tones. And then even in Grandma Effie, a uh, photo there of her sweater, that's a different turquoise, okay? So then the other thing is, is the, uh, the use of a color that's not in my paper. And so that is the color coral. So I added coral for my title because I wanted to use this scrap paper. So using this scrap piece of paper, that coral color is right there. So that already told me you can use coral embellishments. And so that's what I did. I even used that coral for the title that says Effie. And isn't that an unusual name? I would love to know. And I'm hoping my mom will know this. She's giving me all the details. Uh, where this name came from. Is it a family name? I mean, even how it's spelled. E-I-F-F-I-E. Very unusual. And so, of course, my journaling is going to go right there. And it's all going to be on my mom's perspective because I have nothing I have nothing to say about this story. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to do that because as I'm doing this, then I'm getting to know someone that I never got to meet. And so then, of course, as I said with my clusters, and let's talk about this for a minute because I got this question. When I say a visual triangle, I want to show you my visual triangle. So we are going to go here to here. And now this cluster here would be what I would call 25%. This cluster here is about 50%. And this here, that's a 75%. So I have a visual triangle, meaning I have three points of interest. And they're all different sizes. You can do a visual triangle in whatever you want. So we're going to go from here to here, from here to here. And then let's, uh, I'll just use this as a branding, a branding strip. So there's my visual triangle connecting everything. And so I love the visual triangle and I loved back in the day learning that concept. Of course, I learned it from home decorating on Home and Garden Channel. <laughs> Christopher Lowell, yes. Uh, the visual triangle is so helpful, not just in scrapbooking, and but I use it for decorating and all kinds of things. So why I like it in scrapbooking is that it tells me where to put things and what to use. So I like that because you can get a visual triangle. Look at this right here. See these coral um, uh, enamel dots? These make a triangle within 
my visual triangle. So that's why I love it. And I think the more you use it, the more you fall in love with it because it just simply helps you decide where to put what. And so then, of course, you can see all I did was just play with what was in my kit and using a scrap, using doilies. And for my doilies, I think there is three or four here. Yes, three or four. I like how three or four layered on top of each other. It looks a little meatier. And then I used some Tim Holtz die cuts. And one thing I want to say with your die cuts is don't be afraid to cut them. Cut them down or cut into them. So I cut into this one so that I could insert some of this die cut on top of the photo. And then I just layered some under here and under here. And then again, using this up here as a subtitle. And then using some of these die cuts. And so when I'm using die cuts that have words... If they can emphasize my story, I'm all for it. This talks about furniture and upholstery, which that is my family's background. So that is fun. Even got on a sewing machine bread. Love that. Okay. And then, of course, I have this vintage woman on here, which is perfect because, yeah, it's great grandma. Why not? Okay. Now, let's talk about acid-free for a minute because, of course, I'm using original photos. And original photos is definitely a personal choice. It's a personal decision. Uh, you do what you want to do. Don't let anybody tell you. If you don't want to use original, you don't have to. If you want to use original, go to it. Yes, there is no rule on that. And I always say from in my family, this is a personal thing in my family, is that if I don't do something with them, nobody ever will. So they might as well be in an album. So All right, so let's talk about acid free before I go down another rabbit trail. And i got to film this again. When... I get asked about acid-free, and I've been getting a lot of questions about that. And I guess because we've been working with Heritage Photos and the Heritage Round, and then I use some originals in my scrapbooking. So do I worry about acid-free? The short answer is no. And let me give you another short reply to that short answer. Because as we're using this product, and this product, and this paper, and this product and this product, and this adhesive, and then this adhesive. How do we even know any product? I don't, I don't care what product you pick. How do we know that it truly, truly is acid-free? Because of how things are manufactured today in a quick, cheap manner, and then also to where they are produced. Nobody can ever really give you guarantees on anything. It just, it's just the way this hobby is. So even with your photo processing, are they really truly acid free anymore? We don't know the answer to that. Who's going to be around 100 years from now to see if they really were? I'm just, I just don't worry about that. I record this story for today and for my memories, for my family today. I don't even think about tomorrow because it's not guaranteed to any of us. So I just don't stress over it. However, with that, there is uh, three things that I know in my scrapbooking I do try to stay away from. Actually, four. One of them is construction paper. We know that decays so quickly. The other one is newspaper. We know, uh, we're told that is clearly the one of the most uh, decaying objects you can use. You don't use that. And then also rubber elements. Rubber elements have been known to decay and to eat into your papers. And I think it's because of the reaction of adhesive to the rubber embellishments. So those are the three things I definitely don't use for sure. And then I will tell you that in my month in review albums, I include memorabilia. And I will tell you the one thing that has been, I can see over the years is receipts, actual receipts that you get in a store. They don't hold up anymore. So in the future, I probably won't be including many more of those. But those are the items that I just, you know, I try to stay away from. But all of this other stuff, you know, what's the option? You only use paper? Well, how do you know the paper's acid-free? You just don't. They can say, and here's how I came to that one day. When I was talking to a representative in Scotch about this product here, and I had asked them, you know, with this new formula, is it really, you know, the old formula, quick dry, whatever, whatever. And, you know, she gave me a really good answer and she was very honest. And she said, well, the lab tells us. And so a product can put anything, you know, a manufacturer can put anything they want on their product, but they're really going by word of mouth of somebody else. So when, uh, to make a long story short, is anything truly acid free? So I just don't worry about it. I really just don't. And even with these uh, Tim Holtz paper clips, uh, some people back in the day, like 2006, 
uh, 2007, a lot of people were like, don't use metal on your pages because they'll rust and decay. I've never had anything like that uh, in my albums to do that, but then you have to consider where you live. If you live in a high humidity or high altitude, you do have to pay attention to certain products. So acid-free is one of those things. It's a personal decision. But and is anything acid free? No, nothing's guaranteed. So I say enjoy it today. Tomorrow will come as it does anyways. So then let's go to the next question. And that is acetate and transparency. So again, is that acid free? Probably not. No. But then, you know, they used that product back in the day when they did slides and film. And, you know, is that acid free? I just don't even go there anymore. I gave up. I gave that up. I have other things to worry about, like how I'm going to put my paper in my room. <laughs> yes. So how do I adhere this? And so I left a little bit here is that you can see that right here in this uh, transparency or acetate, there's always a design. And so I adhere my, I place my glue underneath that uh, design. So in this case, it's black. And so I just put my glue underneath and wherever it won't show. So that's what I do. Wherever that color is, that's where I put my adhesive. And for me, acetate and transparencies, it is my uh, quick dry. And this is what it looks like. It's called Permanent Tacky Glue Photo Safe. Yes, this is the quick dry. This is what they call. And again, that's what the lab tells Scotch. <laughs> you know, we're going by word of mouth on everything. So then let's talk about adhering flare. Again, flare does have a metal embellish, you know, metal element to it. Is it acid free? Have no clue. And so <laughs> it's one of those things. It's a personal decision for my flare. What I do is that I adhere it with foam tape. It just seems to hold the best for me. And then I don't have to worry about it drying. And sometimes if my flare has a lot of, you know, if it does have a concave, uh, you know, if it does have a hole and, you know, it's concave, sometimes I have to add a couple layers of flare to get uh, a couple layers of foam tape for my flare to hold. Okay, I think I'm going down. My mind is whirling. I need to uh, get here with <laughs> the program. Okay, the other question. As I showed in a previous segment, I was playing around with those papers. So one of the questions I got by one of my lovely subscribers, and it was a great question, she said, why do you not adhere as you're playing with your papers and your photos? And it comes down to me and my style and my actual process is that I do a lot of tucking and layering. So I wanted to show you for an example. So for my photos, I decided I wanted a mat. So if I would have already adhered them, I would have to peel them up and do a mat. And so then under the mat, I have a doily. Underneath the doily, I have this scrap piece of paper underneath this scrap I have a transparency and under the transparency I have a branding strip so for me it's all about my process and so I do a lot of tucking and layering and I'm making decisions and so then if I see this to my right oh I could add this I could add that and so I can't adhere as I go because I can't commit as I go. My process really is just playing with things and then once I like it then I started hearing. But then again it's knowing your style and then knowing your process. Some people have to adhere as they go because otherwise they would sit here for 45 minutes and keep moving things around. So it's really knowing your process. And so for me, my process, the fun part is the moving around. But for some people, they don't like that. So then they have to adhere as they go. So really, it's just knowing your process, knowing your style, and then rolling with the punches. Yes. Uh, if you have trouble committing, then you probably need to break out your big red or whatever adhesive you're using and go ahead and do that as you do your layout. There's nothing wrong with any of it. Okay. So if you do it that way, then that's the way you absolutely should do it. Just enjoy it, whatever it is. Okay. So then let's talk about this T square ruler and these mini alphas. I got this question and I think it was because of in our six by six series, I had showed a layout about my dad and I had used a lot of these mini alphas and I got several questions as to how I line them up. And so the quick answer is your T-square. Okay, the T-square, but then I have to do it a certain way. I have to get my T-square and I get it started. But then when I do these mini alphas, what I have to do is I have to rotate it. So instead of me doing mini alphas in a horizontal, I have to do them in a vertical sense. So I think it's easier to stack them vertically when you're doing your letters rather than lining them up horizontally, if that makes sense for me. And it might be because I'm left-handed. It just seems like I can stack them better 
then I can line them, if that makes sense. So yeah, I just turn my page and I work in the opposite manner. So I would start here with my G for grandma and I would work my way up this way. So like you're stacking firewood <laughs> rather than doing it this way. I just don't think it lines up. And I think the problem is it's because of our T-squares. Even though we love them, and I could not scrap without a T-square, could not. It's just these T-squares are not, they're not great. And when you line things up, and I'll talk about this one here in just a minute, I've got some questions, is that you just can't line things up. And then if you get lump and bump like I do, you got a braid here and an enamel dot here. Yeah, it's almost impossible. So with these mini alphas, I just get it started. And then, like I said, I rotate my page and I stack them rather than line them up. I think it works better. So let's talk about T-squares for a minute. I got this question and someone asked me, Several people asked me, what is this T-square? You can see it's different. This is by Tech Tools. It's found at Hobby Lobby. I got this for like 74 cents or something. It was on clearance. It was just a fluke. I was actually going to the bathroom and I saw it and I was like, 74 cents for T-square? Yeah, I'll take it home. And the reason why this works really well, I'm loving this one. I just got it recently. Is because look at the difference in the head. It is bigger and wider and it just sits a little bit better. Uh, but I will tell you when you... The secret for a T-square is that if you want to work wherever you're working, you need to be, uh, how do I want to say this? Say if I want to line something up here, I need to make sure that I'm using the bottom end of a T-square. And it's because of the bulk of the head of a T-square, this allowance right here doesn't let you line up as well. So say if I wanted to put something here. Let's say if I wanted to line up this puffy puffy uh, butterfly. So I would be working from this end. And so you can't, uh, let me back up. When you're using a T-square, you have to press on it to get a good lining of a T-square. So you have to press down on it. And so then I can line it up right there. Okay. Now, if I was working from this end, the head part, what happens is <laughs> Because this has bulk up here, because this is the header, you can't push down. And so what happens is when I go to line this up, look what happens. My butterfly wants to go underneath, okay? So I have learned over the years when it comes to a T-square, you work from the bottom of the T-square. You want to work from this end because then you push it down and then you can, things won't slide underneath, if that makes sense. That's just a little bit of talk, a little bit of a hack, but I will tell you T-squares are something I have always been on the lookout for, always will be, and I swear I'm going to talk to an engineer someday and I don't care how much it'll cost me, I will find a T-square that is, is built for scrapbookers. I, I will. If I have to contact we are memory keepers and say, this is what you need to do. I think I'm going to because these work out. Well, I will tell you, this one only looks like this because I added a metal ruler underneath to give me some stability because too many things were sliding underneath. Well, I can't use a T-square if I can't line anything up. And so that's why I'm saying always work from the bottom of your T-square. So you can see things still go underneath. That's even pressing down things still slide underneath. So yeah, it's just one of those things. It's not going to be perfect. Just wing it, go with it. Okay. So that was probably a little bit of talk. Okay. So that's one more thing. How do I, what am I going to do with these leftovers? This is the last layout for this kit crunch. So I got asked that and I will talk about that. So you can see here to the right, I have these puffies. They're going to go back in the original packaging. They'll go in my embellishment bucket bin. This was a kit starter. That'll go back in the packaging. So what will I do with all of this here? And let me move my papers here. My alphas will all get put back with my original alphas where I pulled them from. So let's talk about this stack right here. What will I do with all of this? And so my decision is, and now this puppy's going to have to go back. That's the only embellishment I picked for my layout that I didn't use. And so all of these scraps. I will tell you, now this is part of my kit starter, so I have to keep that for the next one. That I will keep probably these and all of that stuff. That would either... I will either keep this for someone as, sometimes I do giveaways, I just add in my purge pile with giveaways. So I would uh, do all these little pieces, probably that and that, and I would just add it and give it to someone. I don't keep small things like this. And then everything else, I will make a decision. So that would go to scraps. Yes, 
scrap scraps and then I would probably cut that down and put that in my scrap pile and then that is going to all get put back with my regular papers so for me when it comes to tearing down a kit or I'm done with a kit I already have made a decision in my space what do I keep what I don't keep I don't keep small scraps this bogs me down no but I will keep special scraps but these small ones, no. And my embellishments, I know where they're going. I know where my papers are going. I know where my alphas are going. So when it comes down at the end of a kit for me, it's not hard for me to put it away because I know exactly where everything's going. And I think that's the key when you're done with a kit, when you're done with a page kit, a big kit, mega kit, collection kit, you have to know where you're putting it in order to put it away quickly. And also it comes down to what, if you don't like something, when you're done with a kit. Say if something just isn't your fancy. There's nothing wrong with purging it at that time. You don't have to put it away if you don't like it. And so if I run across something I don't like, I'm not gonna put the I'm gonna I'm not gonna take the energy to put it away if I don't like it. So I hope that made sense. I hope, All right, I hope that wasn't too much talking, but I did want to address those questions I got uh, recently and I was trying to make a list of them and talk about them and I thought why not? Because they basically were all covered in this layout. And so it comes down to one of those things that you definitely can get the opinion of another scrapbooker, but at the end of the day, it is your decision. This is your story, your memories, your layouts, your albums. You are the one who gets to make the decisions of what you like, what you don't like, what you want to use, and what you don't want to use on your pages. Don't let anybody pressure you. No, no. <laughs> No, this hobby is not a hobby that there should be pressure and you need to do this. There's no rules. No, this is just about enjoying paper and enjoying photos and enjoying the people in our life. Absolutely. So come back in another week. We will have Kit Crunch for December. It will be our last one. And so will I be continuing with Kit Crunch in 2020? We'll talk about that as well. And then how much did I spend overall for all of these kit starters in Kit Crunch? We'll talk about that. So that's all I have for today. There will be some close-ups to follow. And uh, thank you for letting me introduce gra Great Grandma Effie to you. <laughs> I wonder if she ever got kitted about that name, Effie. Well, you couldn't walk around with that name nowadays. No. <laughs> Grandma Effie. Okay, that's all I have for today. Come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.